Hey, did you know that you can add full Deer Green Star GPS capabilities to one of these gators? In fact, any UTV. I was a little nervous about this, so I asked some of my buddies from AHW to come over and help me with this. We've got the antenna and the display from my brother's farm. So Tom and Randall loaned us that. Those are expensive. Uh, but these guys are gonna help us get it to work inside this gator. Let's get started. So I've got Keith with me. Keith, yep. you do GPS stuff, right? Yep. With, uh, with AHW all the time. Yep, I'm a precision ag specialist at one of our locations. You guys have met Matt before. Matt's been on our channel a lot of times, yep. right? Yep, uh, You times. helped me with the uh, mid-mount mower uh, getting that deck adjusted last yeah. year, and now yep. it goes on like perfect grease. Yeah. What are we gonna do technically today? I mean, I, I don't really see much here except the display the display and antenna that, that Tom loaned us. So is there is there much to be done here, Keith? So that's the nice thing about this gator. The new gators have got a lot of CAN bus already on them. Okay. So we are simply just adding a couple extra harnesses to connect with the appropriate uh, connectors to the display and to the globe or antenna. A little wiring harness here. This goes up in the back? Yep. And then we're gonna put the antenna here. Yep. And we're gonna mount the display inside and if you've seen this gator before, we've, we've used it with a, a sprayer, a PWM pulse switch modulated sprayer. I don't know mm -hmm. if you saw that. Yep. Uh, it's, a, it's a deer branded sprayer. It allows us to go any speed we want. Well, because of that, we already had some of the harness, probably the biggest part of the work, right? Yeah, yeah we put that harness in uh, before you got the gator in our shop. It's got some CAN bus connectors right on there so that we can, well, it's got diagnostic ports and all mm -hmm. too. So yep. this gives us a good start. This should be easy. Yep. A, a non HVAC gator. Yeah. Um, or a gator without a roof would have this bracket clamp around this back tube here, which, which is where the, the okay. receiver would mount yeah. instead of mounting it on the roof like we're gonna, gonna do today. It would simply go around. And this, this is kind of a two inch tube? Yep, two inch source. tube that is your ROPS. Yeah, okay. But since we have the roof, then so we'll yeah. use something different. It has, it has holes in it, just like we have holes here. That's already... So you've taken out these back screws and you've propped up the roof here just a little bit, right? Yep. So we can get that wiring harness up through there. Yep. Okay. Five screws, 13 millimeter socket is all yep. you need. Okay, so the wire really doesn't have to run very far. It looks like the wiring was already to the corner of yep. corner post of the, of the cab here. here. It is on the, on the, uh, the gators with the, with the full cabs. The 835, 865 uh, M and R's. I guess I'm a little surprised at how much of it was pre-wired and was standard equipment. I, I expected we'd have to run wire all the way from the back here, all the way down to the, to the receiver. I had no idea that it would be all pre-wired like this. Oh, and this is not even required for it, right? Nope. That'd be for if you wanted to put lights back here. Hey, 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 Matt, that's the next thing we need. We need to get some rear lights. We need to get you some LEDs to put back here. Yeah, and so we've got all the wiring already. Yeah. Yep. We'll be set on that. For this, Matt, I'm kind of glad I didn't have the R, which I would have had to, we've had to taken down a lot of that the sound headliner. Liner, headliner, yeah. yeah. Is that all done already? Ready for the bolts to go back in now. So I see here there's, uh, looks like there were plugs here, right? For just a pre, right. a, kind of a pre-dented place here for the mount, right? Yep, they're molded in there. So and what we have here is some self-tapping studs that we're gonna put down in here. We're gonna use a little adhesive and then our mount is actually going to mount on top of this. Okay. Uh, normally in the kit, we would have just this square. Mm -hmm. uh, I have put together the riser kit to come up above the cab mm -hmm. so that our globe would sit forward facing instead of rear facing. Okay, so we're gonna spin the globe around from how the typical deer approach is. Correct. And that'll just be for some functionality and make it easier on you uh, out in the field for setup. Yeah, that sounds good. So it's gonna be facing forward. By the way, all the parts that we're showing here today is in a kit at greenpartsstore.com slash TTWT, and it will allow you to uh, put all of this equipment into a, a Gator 835, 865, I believe that's an M or an R, yep. right? Yep. We also have a kit that'll work on other non-deer equipment, right? Yep. Kind of yep. a universal kit. Have a different style mount um, for the front of a UTV, uh, we could also rig it up with similar parts to this as well. There's a whole host of options out there. It depends on what you have and what you're comfortable with drilling holes into, really. So that universal kit, then, it, it'll also be available 
greenpartstore.com slash TTWT. By the way, if you use uh, code TTWT, get free shipping there. It's a little surprising to me that, that you can get this uh, Green Star equipment to work gracefully on the non-deer yep. equipment, but it works pretty easily? Very easy. So okay. the biggest thing is CAN bus today is what is the communication lifeline and that enables everything to talk as far as green to green solution okay. in this case. Okay, so really what we're getting here by putting on a gator and, and instead of one of the competitive brands is these pre-mounting pre yep. brackets and some of the pre-wiring so that we didn't have to do as much wiring. Yep. Uh, that's really the benefit that we're yeah, getting Yeah, deer has definitely heard the voice of the farmer in this case and put it put in place in their R&D for stuff like this. That's cool. Now, Matt, this is really not for me. My brother, Tom, yep. my nephew, Randall, they're wanting to map their field boundaries a little better. Um, they don't have good boundaries marked, right, yeah. around around their fields, especially they're, they're in the southern part of Illinois. It's, it's not as flat in level as it is here. Oh, no, no. So we've got a lot of, of ditches and waterways that that they want to be able to drive over with their sprayer, but they don't want to spray herbicide right there yeah. on those. So if you go in and you map your boundaries, um, you'll be able to go in with that sprayer, and when you're going across those boundaries, uh, it'll automatically shut off, uh, shut off the sprayer. So you're not spraying where it doesn't need to go. Tom estimated that his amount of spraying time could be reduced by 40%. He said that he goes up and down every ditch now. Yep. Okay and that he thinks he, he ends up driving the field at least 40%, maybe even sometimes 60% of the field of double, so double application. By when doing I say, that, but, but hold, when I say double application, he doesn't spray it twice, he drives it twice, because the sprayer's already got this system in it that won't, won't double spray, so, yep. so that part's taken care of. But it's just this extra driving that's costing him. Yeah, the extra driving, which is costing extra fuel, and then even, even if he was manually shutting, on, shutting it on and off, um, he's still going to have a little bit of overlap with his product, um, and this will eliminate that. It's going to save him saving tons of money on product, and fuel, um, and time. Yeah. So he already had the you know the uh, automatic the, the tips automatically shut Swap off, and control. they and they yep. won't do any any uh, double spraying there. But what they what they couldn't do was just drive straight over the waterway and have it stop and start. They didn't know the boundaries of that waterway. Yeah. Right, and so what we're going to be able to do here is drive that gator over every one of their waterways. That's going to take a few, yeah, a few minutes. Yeah, it's going to take you a little while, but uh, what, better to, what, what better time of year to do it is in the winter when it's froze up, solid, you don't have to worry about getting stuck, and you're going to be in a nice heated cab. Yeah, I'm going to be in here in the heat, and um, there's no crops on the fields. No. It's a good Nothing time for it. So, yeah, that, that's going to be good. Now, what else could we use this for? I mean, this whole concept of having powerful... GPS, that's, and not only do we have the GPS receiver, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. I think depending on which subscriptions and all you have, you have the RTK mm -hmm. and some of the other, the other options, yeah. right, that get you down to within an inch or two, yeah. right? So we can, in addition to that, we can map. So we've got mapping of where all we've been. You mm -hmm. can set your swath width. You can set what they call AB lines, right, so that you can go back and forth. So your auto track, yeah. Yep, your AB, AB lines for the auto track for the auto okay. steer. And we're not going to do that here today. We're not going to do the auto steer. That was going to require a lot of modification to the steering column and all that, well, we just didn't think was quite worth it for what we're doing. Yeah. Um, but it could be done. So I've always thought about using this. I, this is probably above what can happen now, but I don't know if you've seen that uh, sprayer that I've shown on here, the, the deer sprayer mm -hmm. with the 15-foot boom. It will allow me to go any speed that I'd like. I would love to have that thing connected with my Green Star so that for a lawn spraying company, for instance, they could, they could have this same scenario where they don't end up double spraying. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of, especially in a residential area, people are concerned about just over application of yeah. these chemicals, right? Keith's actually uh, set up some gators that way for some uh, professional lap people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it's possible. That's fascinating. Now, what we're doing here, the, the cabling that Keith's adding right now is really not a huge amount of cost, is it? I mean, yeah, it's not going to be 50 bucks, but no. I mean, it's not a huge amount of cost for the cabling that we're adding. Yeah, I mean, everything here today is, is uh, in the neighborhood of 1000 Okay. Yeah. Okay, and that's really labor and all, right? Yeah, that's labor and all. Okay. And, and, and depending on the gator and the application that we're putting it in, um, there could be more or less harnessing required. Um, on the, on the, in the case that you have here today, You've already got some of those harnesses, so the cost wasn't quite 
um, to the max. Right. Um, but it, it all depends on the application that we're putting it in, on what those harnesses and, and brackets and things are all good all going to total up to be. Yeah, yeah, it makes it makes a lot of sense. There's several different ways to do this. It's it's not necessarily prescribed. For instance, sometimes I guess you put the antenna instead of up there in the middle, you put it on the front. On the yeah, front corner. yeah, we actually got a mask that we can use the front two inch receiver hitch um, on the Gator or like a Polaris Ranger um, and, and, and mount it that way as well. So you pull one pin and you can take that mast in and out instead of mounting it, uh, mounting it to the roof of the Gator. So you've moved this CAN bus connector here it was down right on the dash and now you're putting it up here just to make it handier for me right. so it won't be in the way yep when we're connected and then when you're not using it you can just simply shove this in here okay to there but it's not yep. going to fall through and anything. you're going to put the display then right up here somewhere yep it's going to okay. be right here sounds good so i put this right in here like this and then just oh look it latches right down that looks really professional. I think it'll go faster now, Christy. Yay! Keith, you got it installed now. I see that this is the Green Star system here. This is a Gen 3 unit, right? It's, right. So it's a 2630 is the model number. It's been around for years. I think there's mm -hmm. a newer one out now, but um, this is what this is what you've got. It's maybe got a little bit of shake to it, but right now it's not hitting anything. This is a spot for an iPad. Yep. You had your iPad up there. Um, it's all hooked up. The only thing is we don't have any GPS signal because we're inside. We're inside this steel building. So let's get outside and try it. Let's do it. This does kind of create an interesting question to me. I mean, this is quite an obstacle course that we're working with here. Are we going to be able to piece this together and make a, a, a yep. single boundary out of it? Yep. Okay. Yep. We'll just be snapping points between multiple points or straight lines. So it all come together in the end. Okay. Okay, so since this disc is in our way, we just skip that portion of the boundary and right. we'll kind of clean that up later? Nope. After we'll, the fact? We'll just get straight here. Oh. And then we're going to unpause it, pause it again, and now we're going to go around our next obstacle, which is this other tree. Okay. So now we're just creating small straight lines and they're all being pieced together. So we're going to go every so often here in a field, you would go, you know, a couple hundred feet at a time, whatever makes sense now. All right, so start it again. Okay. It, does it hurt if you record the whole length? No. Nope. nope, it's just going to know every little movement that we've done. So again, so I'll start it about here. Yep. I'll go forward just a little bit here till just beyond the... And then I'll pause it, and I'll go all the way to the other end of it, to about here. So now this is done. You can, and we've got roughly 9.81 acres on the whole boundary. Yeah. So now I want to go to pond. Yep. So there's two types of boundaries too. There's an interior passable and impassable. Possible meaning I can go through a waterway or something, you know, I just want the machine to turn off. Now, uh -huh. this would be an impassable boundary because we definitely don't want to send something through this pond. So, yeah, you'll be able to tell exactly how big this pond is. For the points of this boundary, we are basically the front left corner of the vehicle, right? Yes. I want to do the driveway. Okay. And this won't be, I mean, we can go pretty fast on this yeah. once I... Yep. And there really is no speed issue, right? No, there is no speed limit really to it. As fast as you can ride it, basically. Keith, that was quite a ride. We've got a lot of lines on our yard. It's, it's interesting. I think we've got the driveway separated. Yep. We've got the pond separated. We've, we've got boundaries on everything yep. in our yard. And what we're going to do with this, we'll, we'll take it down to Tom and Randall. Hopefully I understand this enough with the skill that, that Randall and Tom already have yep. to be able to put boundaries on all their fields and then interior boundaries on their ditches, waterways. I think this is going to be a, a great solution for them. Yeah, I'd like to know how much they think they saved over previous years after using it. Yeah, I think you it's going to be a big chemical. time saving. I, I, you know, he, he always sprayed around the ditches, but it was just that time of how much it took to drive on all those. Yep. It's, it's hilly ground there. It's yep. not, and so there's a lot of small little waterways that they, they work around. So yep. yeah, it's going to be major. Matt, thanks 
You're welcome. Appreciate you coming. And folks, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. We'll try to show you more. We're going to be able to do some screen recording in the future on this, hopefully, and actually show you some of these boundaries being drawn and just a little bit more about this uh, GPS technology that we got. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. And then it'll, I can overlap a little and it'll fix it, right? It'll kind of fix it, yep. <laughs>